Uh, can I just apologise that I'm not Victoria Corrin? Um, <laughs> she was meant to be doing it uh, tonight for those of you that read the Radio Times. Is that anyone? Oh, oh you just sounded genuinely disappointed anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Victoria Corrin. Uh, in the news this week, nine years after famously getting stuck on a zip line, Boris Johnson accepts an invitation from the King of Spain to try his hand at parachuting instead. In Tokyo, it seems the producers of the Japanese version may not have remained faithful to the true spirit of Peppa Pig. <laughs> and at a wedding in Scotland, doctors advised the groom to give it a few days before trying to consummate the marriage. <laughs> On Paul's team is a journalist who has recently written a novel titled The Whistleblower. If you only read one book this year, read one of mine. <laughs> uh, will you please welcome Robert Peston? <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a broadcaster who says there should be a law that forces government ministers to answer questions properly when being interviewed. Asked if he thought this was a good idea, one minister replied, it's been a very warm October. <laughs> Will you please welcome Rylan? <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Robert, yes. have a look at this. Uh, hydrogen car, new green energy being promoted. Uh, that's what, yes. What is it? <laughs> This is replacing old boilers with heat pumps. So, yeah, it's um, going very well. Uh, we're all going to be green sooner rather than later, and it's all going to be wonderful. <laughs> We've got a heat pump policy, yeah. uh, which is to you know, reduce all the greenhouse gases that each of us are uh, spewing out of our homes, and the policy is going to... I think it's 0.02% of UK homes are going to be converted uh, to these green... I hope you're not undermining pumps. the Prime Minister, Robert. <laughs> This is about hot air specialists and the Prime Minister, my God, he really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. These are the government's plans to help us stop wasting energy at home. Um, what can we do to keep warm in a carbon-neutral way, apart from put a jumper on or, in Robert's case, occasionally do up a few shirt buttons, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing we could do is get a heat pump and take advantage of the government's promise of 450 million over three years to fund renewable energy in homes. Get rid of that old boiler. That'd be a good slogan, wouldn't it? <laughs> My husband uses that all the time. Um, <laughs> what was little Richie Sunak's really unhelpful response to Boris's enthusiasm? Did he make a lot of rock and roll records in the 1950s? <laughs> <laughs> little good God, he missed Molly. Long tall Sally. <laughs> that might this be joke can be explained on teletext later on if you go to the red <laughs> button. <laughs> he did something not very musical. He explained how much it would all cost. Well, uh, the Treasury reckon £80 billion, uh, will need to be raised somehow. And the more electric cars that are sold without road tax, the more money the government will lose. So electric cars and roads in general will have to be taxed. But this is his line on the whole. Boris says we're going to spend as much money as anyone wants in order to be popular, and Rishi Sunak says, well, we can do that, but then we have to raise tax. And the whole Conservative Party goes, oh, God, tax. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to do it, though, are they, Robert? 
Look, do, do you really want me to depress you about how bad things are going to be in about six months? <laughs> yes, Robert yeah, Preston. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. This is what I do for a living. We can do that. Like. Yeah, they're four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> Death, plague, famine, war and Peston. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of hope. Do you know who is the Prime Minister hoping to get some money out of? Bill Gates. Yeah, you're right. We, we've got a little uh, mm. clip of the press conference with Bill Gates. I think uh, Bill's putting in uh, 200 million, if I've got, I got, I got, I got the numbers Just right. Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> There's no 400, 400 each. 400 each, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. Okay, well... <laughs> Now, tell me, if you can, about the air source heat pump, then. Um, it takes air from the air mm. and turns into heat inside your home. Is it that simple, Paul? Yes, it, it is. It is that simple. It is that simple. <laughs> Have you got one? Yeah. Have you? In fact, I'm wearing one now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, few journalists are well informed about central heating systems, so they tend to resort to diagrams. So, mm -hmm. this might help, it might not. Here's yeah. one explanation, yeah. yeah, of how an air source heat pump works. That's yeah. actually the design for the new Big Brother house. <laughs> <laughs> and one tip I would say is, if you want to be warmer, don't stand outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a strong tip. That is a strong tip. Should we all cheer ourselves up by, yeah. um, by, by looking at, uh, at Boris speaking? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that cheers me up. He's talking about the areas where Britain is a world leader and I think his circuits have overloaded. Financial services, cyber, AI, quantum computing, gene editing, data, data, uh, data, uh, tech <laughs> of all kinds. Fintech, medtech, edtech, nanotech. <laughs> Lunatech. <laughs> we move on to royalty. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, all right. Well, the Queen's had something to say this week. Does anyone know what it was? Yes, yeah, she said she doesn't know who's going to be turning up at this conference and she wished people would do something instead of just talking about it. Totally right. Yeah. She well, absolutely did. She was opening up the Welsh Parliament. She was overheard saying to Camilla... Extraordinary, isn't it? I've been hearing all about COP, still don't know who's coming. It's really irritating when they talk, but they don't do. What a woman. What a woman. What a woman. I did it work because the Australian Prime Minister wasn't going to come, and then 24 hours later, after she said it, he is coming. There you go. But Putin's not coming, is he? She doesn't seem to have the same sway over Putin. I can't no. think why. <laughs> well, who else isn't coming? I'm not going. <laughs> Mickey Rooney's not going. <laughs> Us too, but neither of you are world leaders. So we don't know if President Xi is going to go. I mean, he's about the only person who matters. What else is China uh, giving their full attention to? Oh, they've got this amazing missile that goes several times the speed of sound, haven't they? Yep. Um, which is potentially quite a serious weapon, unfortunately. Yes, they're testing their new hypersonic nuclear missile that flies five times faster than the speed of sound with a low trajectory. Uh, so its journey is shorter and not picked up by radar. According to Al Jazeera, the missile circled the globe but missed its target by 24 months. Right. <laughs> Well, that went well. Yes, yeah, so London will probably be safe, but good luck, Stevenage. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did the Queen turn down this week? I won it an award and she turned it down because she said she wasn't old enough. That's right. It was the oh, Oldie yeah. of the Year Award, given by the Oldie magazine, unsurprisingly. She wrote to the chairman of the awards committee, Giles Brandreth, to say, I don't meet the criteria. I am as young as I feel. Go on, oh, that's what I like. Yes. Lovely. Love that. The uh, ancient queen said he was disappointed but wished Her Majesty well. <laughs> <laughs> um, how has Prince William been making headlines? This is more your department, possibly, than mine, Ryan, because I dress appallingly, but he wore something. Um, oh, it's just a velvet tuxedo. It is indeed. Nothing wrong with a velvet tux. I'm not saying there is. Especially on a prince. I don't look great in one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he wore a velvet jacket and a polo neck on a night out, which some people said made him look like James Bond. <laughs> I think he looks good. I think he should do that more often. I think he looks all right. I mean, the thing is, the way William was dressed, that would make anyone look like James Bond, wouldn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you'd look in similar? Well, I don't know. Why don't we have a look? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
das Brillet. Oh, it's beautiful. If I wanted a cast of Last of the Summer Wine. <laughs> hey, Hop, I've got this gold cart. Let's push it down the hill. <laughs> I've got to say, when I saw your one, Ian, I thought it was Phil Mitchell. <laughs> and then when I saw your one, Paul, I thought it was Greg Wallace. <laughs> it's a dangerous area for you to go on about people's personal looks, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. But I paid for mine, so that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me who Phil Mitchell is. EastEnders. EastEnders. Oh, right. Oh, great. Proper well, proper leave right. it out. Proper <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I've got another question about soaps now, Ian. So, listening, so I know you know a lot about them. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm what on. What have the nation's best love soaps been doing to highlight climate change? Different characters appear in, in different soaps. So, an Emmerdale character might appear in a Coronation Street, or a Coronation Street character might appear in EastEnders. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't really understand the connection, but anyway, <laughs> to you, why no. does appearing in someone else's soap? Is it about recycling, reusing, or something? <laughs> I mean, are they going to be maybe like you might have Sonia from EastEnders installing heat pumps along Coronation <laughs> Street? I mean, to be fair to Hollyoaks, who have also joined in, they've been a sustainable show for years using mainly wooden actors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Uh, Robert, you didn't uh, perform at Prince William's event, did you? That's a shame, especially with a voice like this. Well, I could be a lady tonight Well, I could be a lady tonight Well, I could give you that a bit of lady to begin with Well, I could be a lady tonight Love to be a lady tonight Love to be a lady tonight Good. Good. Brilliant. You've actually got a really good voice. Have you ever thought of having it tuned? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Robert was brilliant, although I was looking at that outfit and I'm sure that you mugged me once behind an off-licence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear that you've, uh, you do a mean Dawn Butler impression. Is that Dawn right? Butler? No, I don't do a Dawn Butler impression. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I just... I became a little bit obsessed with Dawn Butler. So, throughout the pandemic, BBC Parliament became my favourite channel. And I didn't really know who Dawn was at this point. And it was, it was a PMQs. And she was sitting there just in the background. And do you know, like, if you're on a night out mm. and someone's having a row, but your friends are backing you up and they're just putting their arms up in the background? <laughs> Dawn was like the ultimate girl code. <laughs> and literally, someone was talking and uh, I could just see Dawn Butler in the background going, nah, 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 I'm not having it, I'm not having it. And I, I just became obsessed with her and I was just sat there like that for all day. And she was waving her arms and I was like, go on, girl, yeah, you pipe up. <laughs> Well, she's actually on the show next week, so... She? Yeah, if, if she pulls out, we'll all know why. Um, <laughs> now, this is the blueprint for a green future. The government uh, has suggested we swap central heating for eco-heat pumps. If you want to know how a heat pump works, a fan draws air inside the unit for it to warm the refrigerant, which turns to gas at a low temperature. Gas is then compressed, releases heat to the system, and then condenses back to a liquid state. The liquid refrigerant passes through an expansion valve before it absorbs and passes along the heat, and by that time it's summer. Um, <laughs> this week, Prince William also said that his son George was learning all about climate change. Yes, even he noticed how much the atmosphere warmed up when his auntie Meghan left the room. <laughs> <laughs> In the build-up to COP26, the Queen met Bill Gates, but that was a long conversation when she asked him, what do you do? Uh, I build software, manipulate vaccines and delete emails from Jeffrey Epstein. Um, <laughs> Ian and Rylan, uh, yeah. take a look at this. Oh, first wave, second wave, third wave. How many spray tans I've had? Pop luck, put it in there, might work. <laughs> That's Christmas. Cancelled. That's not happening. So this is where we are. The government keeps saying we're going to carry on as normal, and normal for us is to do nothing until just before it's too late and mm. then panic and change. So when I, oh. I listen to a number of government ministers saying there is no way there's going to be another lockdown, I just went out and bought some toilet rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the NHS's Matthew Taylor urged Number 10 to act immediately, uh, telling The Guardian the government ought to not just announce that we're moving to Plan B, but it should be oh. Plan B+. Plus. However, Downing Street revealed this week that at the moment there was absolutely no plan. <laughs> <laughs>
Does everyone know the difference between Plan B, Plan B Plus and Plan C? <laughs> plan B Plus, also called Plan C, is a lockdown similar to last November. Um, oh. Can anyone remember what, what that was? I don't remember anything. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> November's lockdown was, was finite, it was two weeks. And do you remember what happened after last year's really short lockdown? Yeah. Christmas was completely destroyed. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, those horsemen really have got nothing on you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I was really looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> it's it's just as well that your singing cheered us up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they're going to do. They keep saying, day by day, we'll look at the figures, we'll look at the facts, and then we'll make a decision. We had the health secretary on stage yesterday saying, yeah, they're just it's fine, they're coping. Were you reassured? Uh, well, I mean, not after meeting you. Um... <laughs> Sage, I've only met three times since July, uh, as there is lessened demand from ministers for science. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just ask you, did you have any problems uh, working from home last week? No, not really, because I used to come into the studio... Oh, you're talking to Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Are you referring to my one or two Zoom issues? I'm afraid I am, uh, Robert. I'm really looking forward to the return of the press briefing so I can have more instances like this one. Uh, can I turn next to Robert Peston for my TV? Oh, shit. Hello? <laughs> Afternoon, Robert. Oh, hello. Sorry, my connection doesn't seem to be terribly stable, so I'll get, well, I'll give it a go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Were you waiting for the band to strike up? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I have to say, not everybody in the country was quite so... Did you get a few responses to that? So I make the mistake of being on social media and... Do you not have anything else to do? <laughs> there was a time when I thought it was good for journalism. I don't anymore. I think it's pernicious. It's one of those two-word things, isn't it? It's sort of like it's a bit of a contradiction in itself. Social media, action figures, gourmet burgers. You know, it's sort of... Yes, I agree with you. you know. Sports personality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to just say, that is not my joke. That was a wonderful comic called Donna McPhail, who doesn't do it anymore, who you will... Yes, indeed. Out. It was the right time for it to come out. Yes, absolutely. Do you know what the new strain of I'm COVID is? I'm afraid I do. AY 4.2. It is AY 4.2. I 4.2, which sounds a bit like a Geordie confirming an earthquake. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> why, um... <laughs> why might Immensa... Rylan, I think you went to Immensa in Ibiza, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> I was a go-go dancer there. <laughs> Is that, is that, I don't know what I'm saying here, but is that the one next to Pasha? Yes, indeed it is. What is Pasha? I'm going to change your life, Joe Brown. <laughs> <laughs> will you? Absolutely. If I bring some tenor lady, will you take me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to bring the tenor lady, cos I've already packed them, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Why might Immensa be responsible for a bit of the increase? They're a lab that have been caught out. Producing yeah. dodgy results. False negatives, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and people who've actually got it were told they didn't have it. Yeah. And then they were told they did have it, and they thought, oh, God, I've spread it to them. Yes, Immensa have been accused of messing up around 40,000 test results, and officials are now halted testing at the private test centre in Wolverhampton. Yeah. Bollocks, I've lost page 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the scientists said. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see a montage of Michael Gove reacting to being told some information from scientists? Yes! yes. <laughs> Very lovely. Coverage of the whole brain. Mm. We do not have the signal loss that is typical in the commercial mm -hmm. coil. Windows, which yeah. makes it... Uh, so this is an antenna. So we mm -hmm. redesigned the antenna in the mm. on this project. And, uh, and the long-term goal is to manufacture this coil upstairs in the industry space mm -hmm. and make it available to the global customers through Siemens. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, that's what it's about. It's about the show is about commercializing the coils and building mm. coils for more body parts, not just your clinical mm. applications. That work, along with two other imaging projects, is mm. being supported through the Strength in Places funding. Mm. So Another explanation for COVID being uh, back on the rise is the slow deployment of booster shots mm. to the elderly and vulnerable. Mm. Uh, it would never have happened under this man. <laughs> uh, why might Matt Hancock be needing his own booster this week? He tweeted out he was honoured to accept a job representing the UN in Africa. Mm. And then literally 24 hours later, the UN put out a statement saying they hadn't realised he was still an MP and he couldn't have a job. I don't think that's really why they didn't give him the I job. I think you may be right. <laughs> I think you may be right. Hancock said he had no experience in Africa at all, mm. but he was very happy to take it on. And then I think people said to a number of African mm. countries, do you want Matt Hancock? And they said, how dare you? Leading figures across Africa described his appointment as jaw-dropping, <laughs> uh, whilst the chair of the Africa Vaccine Delivery Alliance said, this is so tone-deaf, beyond <gasps> arrogant, that they think we in Africa need Matt Hancock to help 1.3 billion people recover from the pandemic when he couldn't manage one in the UK. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how might this nice lady, Grace, be able to help with the COVID recovery. Oh, is this robot doctors? Mm. Uh, she's a robot, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, designed to help the health service. She's programmed to interact, take temperatures and measure responsiveness in patients. And according to the programmers, Grace is designed to have a comforting demeanour and can stimulate the action of more than 48 major facial muscles. Mm. Good luck to Grace. Yes, that's 47 <laughs> more than Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, should we have a look at Grace in action? Yes, please. Yeah. I can do all kinds of things for elderly people. I can visit with people and brighten their day with social stimulation, entertain and help guide exercise. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. She seems like a nice girl, though. I put a bit of spray tan on the arms because it didn't match the face, but... <laughs> I reckon there's already a few men cranking up to try to get off with her. <laughs> I do. Cranking up? Well, <laughs> old blokes that have to crank themselves... I mean, I'm not looking at you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> But old blokes have to crank up to get ready for a bit of hanky-panky. Oh, I've gone yeah. in the 1950s. It's working! It's working! <laughs> Quick, take the curlers out! <laughs> Should we move on to other news? Now, due to COVID and the shortages, why might it uh, be easier to get into a club this year? When you go into a club, yes. what's there to sort of make it difficult for you? Um, the music, for me. <laughs> Security, the bouncers. Oh, there's a shortage of bouncers. Oh, that's um, right. There oh, is, is there? There's a shortage of bouncers. Yes. Oh. Which is great news for you, Ian, because you don't need to uh, keep colouring your trainers with a Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't even know. I don't even know what that means, Ian, but anyway. Um... So why is there a shortage of bouncers? There's not enough of them. It's going to be... <laughs> I don't think there's a shortage in Essex. Everyone's really? a bouncer. Everyone. <laughs> oh, a bouncer every three doors along. <laughs> what do you do for a job? Bouncer. <laughs> Genuinely. Can well, you have one in your own home? How do you know I have them? <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you outside on the lawn the other morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Economist explanation for why there's such a shortage of everything is known as the great supply chain crisis, which means that things like tankers are in the wrong part of the world, but obviously bouncers are in Essex, which is obviously the wrong part of the world. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And there are no lorries to take the bouncers to other bits <laughs> of the country. You can't transport them or lock off. Yeah, because you can get about a thousand of them in the back of one of those <laughs> big trucks, can't you? But they can't get into the trucks as the truck drivers say, you're not coming in here dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is the news that COVID cases are increasing. Also, it was revealed that Immensa may be responsible for 43,000 false negatives. The health official in charge of investigating COVID testing problems is Dr Will Welfare, <laughs> although he may soon be replaced by his slightly less positive-sounding Welsh colleague, <laughs> Dr Di Soon. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on to round two. Yeah. Randomizer of news. Hooray! 
Fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh. That's Vienna. Th there's a story about an art gallery in Vienna that has lots of, um, I think, turn of the century sort of nude pictures. I don't know what the rest of the story is. They're not allowed. They're not allowed to show these pictures anymore. It's the news that the city of Vienna has joined OnlyFans. What a brilliant face. Um, Shut up. No, they... <laughs> they... Tell us what OnlyFans is then, Ryland. I mean, I wouldn't know. Um, but on OnlyFans is like a subscription site and you can put any type of content you want on there. It's a bit like Twitter, but a there's a paywall and you can choose to follow people and you pay them a monthly subscription. But nine times out of ten, the, the, the content is um, eye-opening. Oh, ah, opticians. Yes. <laughs> well, why would you imagine the Vienna Tourist Board have an OnlyFans account? Well, I mean, because that... of the paintings that... Uh, that paintings. That's right. There you go. Oh, so they're showing the paintings to people in the hope that people will come to the city? Uh, yes, but, it, but also, um, Instagram has previously ruled that a painting by Rubens violated its guidelines on nudity. Get it. Oh, really? So you can only see it um, on OnlyFans. That's a really now. good idea. Well, absolutely. So for around 360 a month, subscribers can view as many nude paintings and statues as they want. <laughs> <laughs> well, in other art news, why yeah. has AI robot Ida found herself in hot water in Egypt. She is an artist robot, but when she arrived at Cairo, they thought she was a spy, and they confiscated her. Yes, she was seized at the border on her way to an exhibition in Giza in Egypt, where guards demanded the removal of her eyes. Oh, how yeah. terrible. She's only a robot. <laughs> what a lovely set of eyes. Look at her. Beautiful woman. <laughs> You've got a it. thing with robots, haven't you? I just think, do you know what? I've just come across such a lot of idiots this year. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. That is a good argument. <laughs> Who would you prefer, Ada or Grace? Oh, come on, no, it's like picking your children, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, as, as, as Ada's eyes remained intact... <laughs> I'll yeah, they, she got her eyes back, I understand. Yeah. She got her eyes back? Yeah, I think so. they put the right one in the right one, cos I don't want her looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us think that Ada's a bit of a hot bot now, but do you want to see her before she had work done? Yeah. yeah. Go on. Go on in. Okay. Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there she is, look. <laughs> I wouldn't mind looking like Ada. <laughs> oh, now, that's what that I look like me. in the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine anyone being asked to make a robot that looked like me? See, I would love it. That's one I would buy. Oh, OK. <laughs> I'll be round. I can't cook, but we could smoke and take drugs. Fine. Um, <laughs> OK, this is the news that the city of Vienna has joined OnlyFans. In 2018, Vienna's tourist board put up posters of nude artworks covered up with the words... Sorry, a hundred years old, but still too daring today. Coincidentally, the same thing was iced on my last birthday cake. <laughs> um, in other news, an AI artist robot was detained in Egypt on suspicion of being a spy. The Egyptian authorities have not said what she would be charged with, although I'm guessing it's a USB cable. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh, yes. There's a couple and they, they got a sort of thing saying you've been, you drove through Bath in your car and you didn't pay the toll charge crossing the bridge and so you owe some £50 or whatever it was. And they said, no, no, no. And they said, no, 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 you definitely did. And they were sent a photograph of it and there was no photograph of their car. But there was a woman walking along the pavement that had these words written on a jumper and uh, it read her jumper as the number plate of a car. That is and, unbelievable. Yeah. Superb. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Um, here's the couple's van. Here's what the CCTV captured. <laughs> I love this. There she is. It's so brilliant, isn't it? But to be fair, she was doing 70 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robert, have you ever worn anything like that? You're going to show me something, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I might as well. <laughs> no, just face the human. It would seem a pointless question. What is it? Us. What is it? Well, it was an interview with the Times magazine over the summer. Uh, you were uh. photographed. <laughs> were you plugging your book? It, no, it's funny you should say that, because <laughs> when you've got a, a, a book to plug, more or less you'll do anything. Yeah. What do you do, OnlyFans? 
<laughs> now that you've told me what it is, of course. There we go. There's your exclusive, Joe. <laughs> this is this is what you were wearing. Mm. <laughs> wow. Brother, what do you think? You should do an OnlyFans. <laughs> It's not the first time you've been unafraid to break fashion boundaries, oh is it? Oh, God. Yes, let's have a quick look. Oh, Robert, what have oh, you got? Oh, yes, the glasses! <laughs> 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 I've forgotten about the glasses. Did the, uh, did the arm fall off? The arm fell yeah. off. It was a particularly <laughs> stressful... It was a particularly <laughs> stressful day. This is like a sort of anti-version of This Is Your Life, where you've come onto this programme and here you are, you've been introduced and castigated. These are my finest moments, actually. Paul, let's be honest. I'm relieved you haven't shown the really bad stuff. Oh, really? Such as? Uh, here we go. Uh, no, 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 we haven't. Uh, now, this is the news that a woman walking in a bus lane in Bath has been mistaken for a van. Uh, according to the Metro, when contacted by the car owners, the council thankfully saw the funny side and agreed to waive the £90 fine. However, if you know the lady in the T-shirt and wish to see her again, you need to pay £200. £130 inspector from the uh, local vehicle van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fingers on buzzers. <laughs> chips. <laughs> I can go one better than that. Yeah. Radioactive chips. <laughs> <laughs> Shortage of chips. It can't be an abundance. Oh, not chip. another thing. It's the news that customers are up in arms about the discrepancy in chips. Serving sizes mm. oh. <laughs> oh. at the branches of Weatherspoon restaurants owned by Tim Martin. How has the great chip fight back been taking place? Well, there's more chips being given to people in the south than in the north, and the people in the north are very angry about it. They see it as southern bias. Either that or the customers have joined a Facebook group. Oh. <laughs> which is called Weatherspoon's Poultry Chip Count. <laughs> How long has this been going on? About uh, six months. Seven years. Is it? <gasps> seven years? Yeah. At least seven years, according to customer Chris Lamb, who posted, been waiting almost seven years for this group, December the 22nd, 2014. I remember it well. <laughs> 14 chips. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been to a weather spoon since. Probably best I don't talk about the ham and cheese panini. <laughs> what other chip-based complaints has the group seen? Green chip. Yes. One customer took yeah. to the group to gripe about the chain serving of cheesy chips, posting, here's my cheesy chips from tonight from the Embassy in Plymouth. Chip count 27, cheese count 1. Oh. oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! That's <laughs> shocking. <laughs> no way. <laughs> A spokesman for the chain told the Daily Mail, all pubs should serve the same weight of chips, but the number of chips might vary depending on the size of the chip. I think that's one of Aristotle's. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the Facebook group comparing the size of Weatherspoon's chip portions. Obviously, each chip in Weatherspoon's is precious, but if you drop one on the floor, the five-second rule is no good. It'll take at least <laughs> ten minutes and a chisel to unstick it from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one of the pictures posted. That's a Weatherspoon's full English breakfast. If you want a continental breakfast, Tim Martin suggests you bugger off to France. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. Balloons! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the news that the inaugural Balloon World Cup has taken place. What is it, keeping them in the air for as long as possible? Yeah. It? Yes. Um, the official rules are, if you let the balloon hit the floor when it's your turn, you lose a point. Right. And that's the only rule, is it? <laughs> well, pretty much. Do you want to have a look? <laughs> yeah. OK. Oh, no. <laughs> it takes your mind for the fact that someone's crashed through your living room window. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 32 <laughs> nations took part. Which country do you think was victorious? Peru. Yes, it was Peru. Yeah, because their score was up at the top of the screen. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were psychic. Did you do that as well? Oh, bollocks. Do you know who they beat? Yes, they beat Germany. Germany. Yes, <laughs> It's also on the screen. Just checking. Um, how do you think we did? Uh, we got knocked UK? out in the third round. Uh, we were knocked out in the first round. Who were we knocked out by? Um, 
Chile. Poland. Equatorial Guinea. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Balloon World Cup was organised by Barcelona star Gerard Piquet, pictured here with his wife Shakira. Uh, Piquet said, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone and try new things. <laughs> To which Shakira said, nice try, but it's still a no. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week oh. features as its guest publication, Model Truck World. Oh. And we start with UK bakery embroiled in what scandal? Profumo. <laughs> <laughs> Poisonous baps. UK bakery embroiled in... Illegal sprinkles. Oh. oh, yes. Uh, the bakery in Leeds has been told by the Trading Standards Agency in West Yorkshire to stop using the food colouring E127 and replace it with Yorkshire's preferred food additive, E by gum. <laughs> <laughs> the owner of the bakery told the press, sprinkles you can get in this country are totally shit. They look <laughs> wank, they bake wank. <laughs> Not to mention the raspberry glazed donut cookie. Don't even get me fucking <laughs> Next, Model Truck World apologises profusely to Model Truck Maker after what? Model Truck World apologises profusely to Model Truck Maker after photoshopping him into the Nuremberg rallies. <laughs> <laughs> Stand behind Hitler on the little truck. Point oh. to the little truck. Very good. Is that the right answer? No. No? Sorry. I must be reading the wrong papers. <laughs> <laughs> Model Truck World apologises profusely to Model Truck Maker after stating their range was produced in 1 to 72 oh, scale. Yes. Oh, oh, terrible. Shocking. That is an outrage, isn't Excuse it? In me. the world of model trucking, there's a significant difference between 1 in 72 scale and 1 in 76. So it's quite an error by the staff on the magazine. Tiny heads will roll. <laughs> <laughs> Next, boxer asked to sign what whilst in Newcastle? Oh, I know, this death warrant. <laughs> Is it Ant and Deck Shins? Is that their surname? <laughs> They're not related. Are they not brothers? No. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were twins. No, no. <laughs> They're identical. Are they? No. no, they're not. No, they're not identical. <laughs> what, Ant and Deck? Yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's Boxer asked to sign fans' microphone. Oh, yes, oh. I did see you. <laughs> whilst in Newcastle. <laughs> Boxer Chris Eubank Jr. was approached by a fan who asked him to sign his microwave. Chris Eubank Jr. is a tough boxer. In fact, he's the most dangerously violent person seen in Newcastle since the football club's new owner. <laughs> Ian, did you get asked for autographed? Uh, yeah, and I, I will sign the same. Perfectly reasonable. Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> <laughs> Ian doesn't get asked for selfies, he does brass rubbings. That's true. <laughs> 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 Signing-wise, I had a woman come up to me at the end of a gig once mm. in Scunthorpe, and she said to me, could you sign my tits, please? And so I said, why? She said, cos I want to show them to my husband in prison. <laughs> Sweet. Have you ever had a weird signing request? I signed this girl and she was with her son and she was a really, really lovely girl and she was like, can you just sign your autograph on my arm? I was like, yeah, sure. And then she came three weeks later with a full-size tattooed <gasps> version of my face and my autograph and I literally nearly died and I was like, why have you done this? <laughs> but she, she enjoyed it and then she named her son Rylan. Ooh. All right, it's not that fucking bad. <laughs> That's the, that's the first thing they've been really shocked by. <laughs> uh, next, what criticised for looking like C-3PO? C-3PO's twin brother. <laughs> is it Greg Wallace? <laughs> <laughs> it is yep. the statue of opera singer Maria <laughs> Callas. Oh, my God. Wow. Criticised for looking like C-3PO. Shall we have a look? Yes, yeah. please. There you are. Wow. Oh, I was thinking of a little one. You were thinking of R2-D2, yeah. weren't you? That's... A spokesman for the Star Wars franchise who asked to remain anonymous said, that statue, nothing like her looks. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Man creates new brand of what using what? 
Mancrate's new brand of soap powder by using the saliva of ocelots. <laughs> Waffle using entire cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm going to say man yeah. creates new brand of schnapps. Oh using Ooh. apples from oh. Chernobyl. <laughs> Jim Smith of the University of Portsmouth has created a new alcoholic beverage using apples harvested from Chernobyl, which she describes as not even that radioactive. <laughs> That's good. The locals in Chernobyl are very good at picking apples well. It's the one upside of having three arms. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, American Pie's Don McLean once cut a show short for what? Um, pie. Must be pie. I think it would be... Uh, it must be pie. You're not far off. Uh, once For a pie break. break. For a pie he break? Once cut he went and ate a pie. He wanted some pie. So American Pie's yeah. Don McLean once cut a show short for a Holiday in Carvery. Carvery. <laughs> holiday Inn does Carvery? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh. You have to bring your own food, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> American crooner Don McLean admitted he once cut short a gig to return to his hotel for some beef and Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> the audience first realised something else was on his mind when he started singing Bye Bye Mistaken Kidney Pie. <laughs> <laughs> and as he finished off his meal with a second helping of chocolate profiteroles and clotted cream, he sat back and sighed, This'll be the day that I die. <laughs> Do you know, I used to know all the words. Did you? Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a big hit, wasn't it? A huge hit. It was a huge hit. Should mm. we sing it? Yeah, go on, then. <laughs> well, yeah, go on, Robert. Do you want me to? Sing it? Yes, We'd please. We'd love to. OK. OK, we shall sing it. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Go on, Robert. And this old girl was drinking whiskey and rye, singing, this will be the day that I die. <laughs> this will be the day that I die. Oh, yeah. together now! <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So you should do this on Peston every week. I will. Thank you. Have you been on it? Yeah. What, Peston? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm on all the time. I do a sort of karaoke number. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly early church music, but... Um... <laughs> Next. Queen gives up what after advice from what? Throne after advice from Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Queen gives up Andrew after advice from lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Queen gives up hallucinogenic drugs after advice from ten-foot sausage riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd actually see this. It's Queen gives up drinking. That's right. It is, in fact, Queen gives up drinking after advice well, from Completely, doctors. not just cutting down a bit. But she's not going to give up, is she? No, <laughs> she's definitely not. <laughs> One likes a gin. <laughs> In fact, yes, the Queen has given up drink for health reasons, or, as she told Charles, she wants to take it easy for the last 35 <laughs> years of her life. <laughs> <laughs> so, the final scores are Ian and Rylan have Woo! four, and Paul and Robert have four, too. <laughs> And I leave you with news that during a rowdy booze cruise in Magaluf, organisers begin to suspect two passengers might be just outside the 18 to 30 age bracket. <laughs> <laughs> in his office at Westminster, Keir Starmer tells his assistant about his exciting week ahead. <laughs> And as shooting begins on the new series of The Crown, one royal is furious on meeting the choice of actor who's been cast to play him. <laughs>